Hi and welcome to this uh, tutorial on sketching graphs using intercept methods, so finding the x and y intercepts. We're going to cover, uh, briefly cover at least quadratics, and then look in more depth at cubics and quartic functions. So let's get on with it. You might remember from previous tutorials that this is the standard form of a quadratic, and I'd get you to pause the video now and see if you can sketch it. Okay, so I've done some calculations here, hopefully they'll correspond with yours, and we'll mark them in. So the y-intercepts at negative 8. We've got x-intercepts occurring at negative 2, and again at 4. And we've got a turning point at 1, negative 9. Because it's a quadratic, our standard shape is a parabola. And the positive x squared term means that it's a happy, so we mark it in there and we're complete. So we're going to apply now these same principles in order to uh, graph both cubic and quadratic functions, sorry, cubic and quartic functions. But with cubic and quartic, we're only interested in the y-intercept and any x-intercepts which are there. We do not have to find any turning point. That's for later in the year. So moving along. To our next slide. You see here I've got a cubic, and I know it's a cubic because it's got one, two, three brackets, and the three terms all contain x, so we've got an x term times in an x term times in another x term, which means we're going to have a cubic. So this is a typical cubic, and we're going to find initially a y-intercept. So the process is identical to what we saw before. We then find our x-intercepts. Bringing that up over here. Ooh, we'll just tidy that up. And then having got the x and y intercepts, oops, we don't need to actually find any sort of turning points. What we can do though, is we can mark in those x and y intercepts, so the x's first. And the y intercept of negative 12. And you might see here that the only way for this to actually occur for us to pass through all these points is if we start high up here, make our way down through negative 12, curl our way back up, and then pass through negative 6 here. You will notice that each time our graph makes its way through, it cuts through the intercept and doubles up back to here. So we call these things singles, meaning they pass through Our x angles, uh, sorry, our x axis a single time. So we'll move on to an, another example now. Okay, so this now is an example of a quartic. You'll notice it's a quartic because it's got one, two, three, four brackets, and those four brackets each contain an x term. So once multiplied together, it gives us x to the power four, a quartic. Again, we will start by calculating our y-intercepts and our x-intercepts. So, and it's done exactly the same as we've done previously. I'll mark them in here without showing the working. But my y-intercept will be a value of 12. And my x-intercepts, and there's four of them, are going to be the values of 3, 1, negative 1, and 4. Sorry, negative 4. When I actually sketch my graph, 
I can mark those in negative one one three and negative four and an intercept here of 12. Now again the only way we can actually get this to work is if we start there and make our way through and again you'll notice that each time I cut the x-axis at what's called these singles so they pass through so all of these points here are known as singles and I just denote that with the letter S. Okay now our final example occurs over here no, we might even skip on to that one over to this one and what you'll notice is there's only three brackets this time but in our middle bracket we've got an x squared term so it still is a quartic we've got an x term times an x squared term times another x term which will mean that we've got a quartic but let's look to see how this is done so again I'll abbreviate it's not good process you in the exam you'd make sure you show all working but here to find our y-intercept what we'll do is look we'll let x equal 0 you've noticed I've put the squared in and so that will give us negative 3 by 1 by 1 so a y-intercept of negative 3 my x-intercepts will equal 3 1 and negative 1. Now interestingly we have what's called singles at the first and the last one and this one this middle term here is a double and I'll show you what that does here. So we sketch our intercepts, sorry our axes, marking our various points of interest And as we come through here, you will notice that we come through high, we touch there. As we go back round to 1, which is this rather unusual thing where we've got a double, it turns our graphs around. So we don't cut the axis, we actually double back on it. And then we make our way through. So that's an example of sketching quartic with a double contain within it. Thanks for listening.